Okay, so we figured out that we can examine multiple models in a single set and evaluate their relative weight of evidence. But what if we find ourselves in a situation in which more than one model has a substantial weight of evidence? If we would like to make predictions from that model, or in fact examine the parameters of those models to draw some kind of inference, then we're in a situation in which we don't know which model to use. And the solution here is to use what's called multi-model inference. And the basic idea is that what we're going to do is combine multiple models using their AIC weights. And what this allows us to do is to obtain inferences that are unconditional on the model. So we're sort of going to average over the model selection uncertainty and in order to obtain values of the parameters or of predicted values. So back to our five order uh, five models, polynomial models. Um, in the example that I had pulled up originally with this one, the second order model was the best one, but there's 16 percent of the weight on the third order model, and of course it's going to have different parameter estimates than the other one. So we want to find some way to combine these values into a single thing. For example, if we were interested in the first order coefficient, the linear coefficient, it might be uh, used as an, uh, an estimate of a, a rate of change or something in a particular uh, equation that we're after. And we want to be able to get an estimate of that that's unconditional with respect to this model selection uncertainty. In other words, it doesn't matter which model you use, you're going to be able to have uh, a good value for it. And so the way that we're going to proceed then to get this so-called model averaged estimator is, is quite simple. What we're going to do is we're going to have the weight of the ith model. We're going to have our estimate of the parameter that we're after, that theta hat, of the from the ith model. And we're, so we're going to have r of these estimates, one for each model. We multiply those two things together and add them up, and that gives us a weighted average of theta hat that is weighted by the evidence we have in favor of that particular model. And this is going to be the, va the best value, in fact, to use. In fact, it, it is uh, easy to show that this is the most unbiased value of that parameter that you could find. So how are we going to do these calculations? Well, we can get the AIC from the summaries of each model, and then we could and also get the coefficient values. And you could calculate them by hand with a calculator or in Excel. It can also be done very easily in R, and I'll show you how to do that in the lab. Um, this is from an old slide, so SAS, I'm not sure if you can do it. I'm sure, it, well, let me rephrase that. I'm sure it can be done in SAS. I have no idea how easy it is. Okay, so what I've done here is I'll, I've pulled up another example, another random sample of data from that uh, true model that we had. And I've calculated the AIC sub C. I've got the K values, the delta AIC values, and the weights. And uh, what you can see from our weight deltas and our weights now is that for this new random example, we've got a still our best model is the second order model. But now the first order model is in fact a, a close second, and it actually has 25% of the weight associated with it. And so what we're interested in now is asking the question, given the different intercepts that are in each of these models, what is the unbiased estimator of the intercepts? So here's our intercepts, estimated intercepts right here. You can see that the, the lowest intercept is associated with the first order model, and they get sort of progressively more positive as you move from the second order model through the fifth order model. And so what we do is we multiply these two values together. That gives us this number here, 0.19. And then we add up this column to get our unbiased model averaged estimate of the intercept, which is minus 0 0.27. OK, so we've obtained an estimate of the intercept. But now what we need to know is how accurate is our estimate of that intercept? And so what we need to do now is calculate this awful looking thing, which is the unconditional variance of our estimator. So you see over here is the theta uh, bar hat, 
That's our av model averaged estimate of theta. We're after the variance of that thing, model average. So this is a hat over the whole variance. And although this looks intimidating, it's actually not that bad. Again, at the core of it, we're going to be summing up over the R models. For each model, we're going to take the weight of that model and multiply it by something. And that something is going to be the variance of our theta hat for the particular model i. So this is the variance of theta hat for the gth model. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to add to that variance um, a component that reflects how different the estimate of theta from the ith model is from our model averaged estimator, this theta bar hat. Okay, and so this is a, bit, a little bit like a residual in the sense that it's the distance between the particular estimate for model i and the model averaged estimate. You should ignore this little i down here, that's in fact not correct. There's only one of these uh, theta bar hats here. So we're going to take that difference, we're going to square it so that it's on the same scale of the variances. We're going to add that to the variance of that particular parameter estimate. So that's going to inflate the variance, and the more model selection uncertainty there is, the greater the distances between the estimates, the greater the variance is going to be. Then we take the square root of that, multiply by the weight, sum all of those up, and then again square it to get it back to a variance. So that all again looks fairly complicated, but let's break it down into pieces. In a minute, I'm, the table I'm going to show you in a second is going to really have two columns in particular. One column is going to be this variance of our estimator, which you can get from the summary table, and the second column is going to be this difference here between the um, model, the estimate for a particular model, and the estimate for all models together. Okay, so here we have it. We've got our weights over here still, our estimates of the intercept for each model, our model averaged inter estimate of the intercept over all of the models, and then this column here is the variance of each of these estimates. So this is the variance conditional on the first order model. One thing I'd like to point out here is that you can nicely see the variance uh, bias trade-off here in that uh, as you move or you're clearly getting a different value of the parameter as you go from uh, this model down to this model, you're also getting a much greater variance of that parameter estimate as you move from the simple model to the more complex model. So that's our variance. Here's our second term, which is the, basically the difference between this value and this value squared. So then we can uh, add these two values together take the square root of those values and multiply by the weight, that gives us this value here. We sum all of those up, that gives us this model average standard error here, and the square of that is the model averaged variance, or the unconditional variance.